This Future Cities Africa episode is presented in partnership with OneMap. Visit them at onemap.co.za. Carlo Barnard is Business Intelligence Specialist at Moonsoft. As part of the OneMap series on integrated digital mapping, we'll be looking closer at the municipal challenges that can be visualized and solved, the value it creates, the role players involved, training and upskilling, collaboration between departments, and more. Carlo, welcome. Give us a brief introduction to your background and your experience in the municipal space. Hi, Dan. Thank you so much. Um, yes, um, I've been in the municipal space for more than 10 years. I basically started off as, a, as an accountant. And one of my first jobs was basically working at a municipality trying to solve their revenue challenges. And then as I expanded my career, I got more involved in the consulting side of things. And I've got a, a wide range of um, experience um, ranging from financial statements, assets, um, revenue related stuff, preparing municipal budgets and all that kind of things. And then um, I actually worked at the municipality as a, a CFO, uh, quite a challenging task. And there I faced various challenges and um, I realized the need for specific tools that could maybe aid you in making decisions much faster and quicker. But unfortunately, at that time, some of these technologies didn't exist and it wasn't widely adopted. And then I basically joined service providers um, that's implementing financial systems and some of these technologies at municipalities. Then I got involved with this visualization of um, information on a spatial platform. And immediately, I sort of familiarized that to my environment when I was at the municipality. And I, I could immediately see the value that it can add in decision making, but also solving day to day problems um, at municipalities and also looking at information real time online um, so that you can immediately take action or whatever needs to be done from that perspective. So, yeah, um, today I'm actually working for one of the major service providers in South Africa. And we're basically focusing on assisting municipalities to be sustainable and basically um, looking at the long-term um, sustainability in the near future. We've all heard about the visualization of data by using various tools, but what value is in the spatial representation of information for a municipality? The value um, of spatial representation of information actually assists quite a, a, a large group of role players at municipalities, um, from councillors to the municipal manager or city manager, CFO, and all the directors involved in the various departments of a municipality. So previously, a lot of people are only looking at spreadsheets with a lot of uh, information in it, but not everyone is actually a financial person and not everyone understands financials and those related uh, matters. So when you represent something visually, and I think a lot of us can actually attest to it, that if you see something on a, on a picture, okay, it makes more sense, okay, and it brings more meaning um, about your problem that you're actually experiencing. So to give you a classic example is where councillors are always pretty much involved in the process of, okay, well, the municipality's debt is escalating. What does the outstanding debt in my ward look like? Or... Basically, um, what is the progress of a specific infrastructure project in my region or what um, for that matter? Then all the role players basically come together. Now, if you give the people the information on a spreadsheet, they say, okay, well, there's 10,000 rand in this area outstanding. You, you, you don't really get a sense of where is the problem. So the moment you actually see it, you can then start asking yourself various questions. Okay, well, maybe this relates to a specific issue in that area. Um, if you look at the, let's call it an infrastructure project, uh, we're basically busy constructing a road in a specific area, and now we want to see progress. Um, if you see it visually on a map, immediately you can see the progress, you can give feedback to the community. But if you only see it on a piece of paper, which is reported to you only a month or two later, then, you know, you've basically lost uh, context to, this, to, to the whole issue. So for me, the visualization is actually bringing out information in a picture format, which is easily understandable for each, for any, any, actually any person outside without having any sort of particular uh, set of skills or let's call it formal qualification for that matter. So it's to make it easier for decision makers that can act quickly on something and make decisions to move forward. Given all the challenges in local government, what are the most important issues that can be visualized by making use of these technologies and how can that solve current problems such as escalating debt, available land for development, service delivery, valuation roles and more? 
Yeah, there's quite a couple of challenges in local government, and I think we read it every single day in the news and so on. One of the biggest things is um, this this contentious issue of land. Municipalities always wants to know, okay, uh, what land is available, whether it is for development or redistribution or those kind of things. And the municipalities never really had, you know, uh, one, let's call it a, a database of available land, which hasn't been sold yet, that actually belongs to the state, okay, which they can use for whatever they decide to do with that piece of land. So immediately you've got a sense of exactly what's happening. Also, where it is very, very um, important, as well as um, municipalities has got a spatial development framework. And in terms of that framework, you need to basically develop your town. That's like a long-term plan to say, okay, how how are we going to use the available land for future economic benefits? Are we going to use a specific, let's say, set of land to for industrial um, purposes or business? Or are we going to establish a new, um, what do you call it, a suburb for residential purposes or that kind of matter? So from that perspective, it is actually valuable when you can visualize it. What is also very important is we need to look at the, the zoning and the land use of properties, because sometimes a specific piece of land is only zoned for, let's call it, residential purposes. So you can't now go and say, okay, cool, now we want to basically build businesses on there or um, factories and that kind of stuff. That creates a challenge in itself. So it's important from that aspect, um, from town planning as well. The other important matter is if you look at, well, basically worldwide uh, pandemic that came into effect last year, Immediately, municipalities are struggling to recover their outstanding debt. A lot of people lost their jobs. So the debt is even escalating more. Now, that adds to the financial woes of municipalities. Okay, so the moment you can visualize exactly where is your, let's call it, outstanding debt situated in which areas or whatever, you can then sort of form a pattern and you can then determine, okay, now we, you know, we, we're sitting with a specific problem in a specific um, area. So how can we address it? Either by way of additional subsidies or whatever the case might be, or should we be more strict in terms of debt collection and credit control? Maybe, so, so all that kind of stuff informs the municipality's policies um, in terms of what direction we're moving into. Um, another very important matter is your um, valuation roles. Um, it is, I would say, in some cases neglected. Um, a lot of people don't actually see the importance of that um, in the municipal environment, but that's basically a sort of a tax that the municipality must levy, um, which they use to basically subsidize other services. Now, if your property valuations are not kept up to date, the municipality might be potentially losing um, a lot of income. But what can also happen is there's new properties and stuff. It ends up on a valuation or it doesn't end up on your municipal financial system. So you are not able to actually bill those customers um, accordingly. And the municipality is actually losing valuable income or revenue streams. Another challenge that municipalities experience actually is in the uh, indigent management. So that is basically the, let's call it your poor households. So the moment you visualize where your indigents are basically located, you can then start asking yourself questions as to whether your indigent registry is complete or not. Um, so it does happen in quite a couple of cases, and there's reasons why people do not want to come to the municipality to ask for subsidies. You know, some of them feel, you know, they, they don't want to ask for subsidies and whatever the case might be. But in any case, so, so besides that, um, the moment you can visualize it, you can see, okay, uh, we need to embark on a process to get more people on the register so that we can give them subsidies. Another issue also is uh, the issue of water and electricity loss. Um, I think in South Africa, the, the total loss is about 49%, which is quite a lot if, if you convert it into um, a value. And how can we address that problem by visualizing this information? Well, it's actually quite simple. You then can start analyzing your consumption patterns um, in a specific area, and then you can identify the losses and you can basically then attend to that issue and you can resolve it. Um, but you can also see where there's illegal connections or where people tamper with water meters and that kind of stuff. So it's a more proactive approach, um, visualizing it and actually um, sending out a big team that goes on foot to try and um, resolve these issues. Another uh, point where it's also very important is from a planning perspective, where a lot of money goes into infrastructure projects, your infrastructure um, department can now look at, okay, well, uh, we know there's a problem in this area. Maybe for the next financial year, we need to embark on a project to, let's say, replace the water pipelines or the sewer pipelines for whatever the matter is. And um, when you visualize it, 
you first of all you can actually see it very quickly and easily and also track the progress are there any real world examples that you can highlight where major municipal challenges were solved by visualizing information and by using this technology Yes, okay, so some of the major challenges that we face is actually whether each and every property in a municipality is on the financial system. And for those purposes, we need to determine, you know, whether the property register is actually 100% complete. Then you get your external valuation role, which basically values each and every property that informs the living of property rights for a uh, municipality. What then also happens is that the relevant tariffs must be linked to this um, specific property, whether it's business, industrial, or res residential. With this basically helps solve a lot of problems is you can now visualize the value of your properties by physically seeing it on a map. What you can then also identify is whether the value that's on your financial system actually agrees to your external valuation role, which is your true source of information. So, if a municipality, is in, as an example, has got a property valued for um, on the financial system for 2 million rand, but on the external valuation role, it is 3 million rand, you can imagine the amount of money that they actually lose. Also, what does happen is that when tariffs are linked to properties, a business tariff is maybe linked to a residential property, which is incorrect. So there we overcharge the customer. But it can also be the other way around, where you've got businesses and they basically charge residential rates. So when you visualize this information, it's actually very quick and easy to identify those queries. Um, you can also set up some, let's call it exceptions. So the general rule basically is that, um, let's use a classic example of, if there's a, a property, there's a house, house built on it, um, obviously there must be refuse collection and um, let's say water consumption and sewer. So if we now go and we say, okay, well, show us all the properties where we do not charge uh, sewer, but there's a water meter linked to that property, those properties will on a map basically appear um, and you can then go and investigate those exceptions. So that is a classic example. Also in the sense of your, your debt collection um, efforts, which we know is a massive problem in um, all the municipalities, so as a municipality, we say, okay, we want to focus on all the accounts that's 120 days plus in arrears. And you basically visualize those properties only. And then we can say, okay, how do we address this problem? Are we go, going to a specific area and we enforce debt collection and credit control more rigorously? Or how are we going to approach this effort? So it basically assists in a, in a lot of um, issues. Also, when it comes to the, the, let's call it the water losses as an example, the moment you basically plot your uh, water infrastructure on a map and you divide it into different zones, you can now go and say, okay, we've got a zonal meter. For, for zone one, um, we've got a bulk meter and in zone one, there's 100 properties. And then you basically compare the consumption of those 100 properties to the consumption that goes through the bulk meter that serves that whole area. And when doing that, you can then identify your water losses in a specific zone. So it's very much more focused than just, again, looking at the spreadsheet or just a report that comes from a system. What are the three major benefits of digital mapping for CFOs and revenue managers? Well, first of all, um, one need to ask yourself the question, um, is my revenue complete? So that for me, as a, let's call it the CFO of a municipality is one of the most um, important matters. You want to make sure that each and every property is built for each and every um, type of service that is supposed to be built on that stand. Because not only will that ensure that your revenue is complete, it will also keep the auditor general happy, but you, you also then know that um, your accounts are accurate. The moment your accounts are accurate, service delivery then speaks for itself and your consumers are happy and they are more happier to pay their accounts without any questions. The second thing is also um, the management of debt. That is extremely important because without money, the municipality can't function. So for us, it's to identify immediately when uh, there's a problem with debt that suddenly spikes, whether it is in a specific area, whether it's maybe only related to one property, but to immediately address that problem. Um, and then also the, the issue of indigent management. I've seen so many municipalities, if not all, the majority of them within these indigent registers are not accurate and up to date. Um, and I mean, we get equitable share to fund the subsidies for those indigents. Now, if you do not allocate the subsidies accordingly, 
um, then your, your debtors are going to escalate and you, at the end of the day, are going to put in effort to go after an account, which should have actually been an indigent account. So for me, those are the three main, main, main um, issues that you can very easily resolve by using these tools. So the value is very well understood, but what is standing in the way of adaptation of, of this technology within municipalities? I think adoption comes in with the, let's call it the users. And because it is relatively, um, let's say it's new in the sense of, uh, you know, it's a new way of looking at stuff. Um, I think it's also a worldwide phenomenon. Um, people, a majority of people do not like change. Um, you first need to prove them that, you know, there's real value in this before they adopt it. So there's a big element of change management. And I think it's all about the, let's call it the convincing effort of a person to visualize or show the other person that how is this let's call a tool or technology going to assist you in doing your work faster quicker be more effective and more efficient than your old way of doing things in the past and also i think the moment when people start seeing these things it's more this wow effect that might also assist in the process of adoption so i think it's basically a user thing um, and change management and because a lot of people, if you've been doing the same job for the last 20 years by doing the same stuff, it's very difficult to change your mindset to say, okay, cool, I will take this opportunity and carry it forward. From the conversations that I've been having with metropolitan municipalities, so the larger municipalities, it seems like this process of you know visualizing data and information is already on the way. Do you think that the problem is with the smaller municipalities, are they a bit slower to, to catch up? Basically, the adoption at the metropolitan municipalities is much greater. Also, because, I mean, you've got a greater um, set of uh, or pool of skills that's working at the municipality. So typically, when you go to your smaller municipalities, those, those guys are, are not used to all these things. So um, also, if you look at the areas where, where some of these uh, people come from, it's very rural, it's poor communities and whatever. And those municipalities always doesn't necessarily have the money to invest in these sort of tools and technologies. I know that part of national government's um, 2013 um, national development plan, they also moving towards a way they, where they want to visualize the information of municipalities in parliament, which I think is a fantastic move because for them, it will be much easier and quicker to see what is happening in our country. What resources do we need to move to make the situation better? Um, and it's all, all about that process of how do you identify where is your core problems? Um, MSCOA, which came into effect in um, on 1 July 2017, which basically regulates the standard chart of accounts for all municipalities, they've also got a set of um, system criteria for uh, metro, secondary cities, um, large, medium and small municipalities. And part of that set of criteria is that it is compulsory for metropolitan municipalities and secondary cities to visualize this information on a GIS and spatial platform. It's not yet compulsory for the smaller municipalities, but obviously if something um, is compulsory for a metro municipality, eventually in the long run, it will filter down um, to the smallest municipality. Municipal officials generally work with tools like Excel uh, with graphs and charts. Why do you think adding a map to their toolbox adds value? So by adding a, a, a map um, to their toolbox, I think it will give them greater confidence that the information that they basically submit on their reports that goes to the, let's call it the CFO in this, in this case, uh, that ultimately ends up in council, will just give a greater sense of comfort and accuracy um, to the user of the information. It will also help them to, um, instead of, you know, just looking at something on an Excel spreadsheet, if you look at it on a map, you can see, okay, well, you know what, I feel comfortable with um, the information that I've been dealing with, and you can then submit it. But also you can extract the information from this visual tool, um, and then you can go and basically create your graph or manipulate it in the, in the form that you want. Um, so I just think it gives you a greater sense of, let's call it security for that matter, um, that you feel confident and comfortable with whatever you give or submit is actually a true reflection of what happened. Not all individuals have a financial background. Uh, so what level of skill is required to make use of tools to understand the issues by visualizing information on a platform? It's very easy to use these um, sort of mapping or GIS tools. 
Um, it's it's user friendly and basically any tools that's out in the market, whether it's a, a GIS tool or a mapping tool or a BI tool, it's basically there to assist the, let's call it a non-financial or non-technical person to actually use this tool as easy as possible. So I think the key thing is if your product is user friendly, um, it's easy to use, um, then people are more prone to, you know, adopt it and basically use it or do whatever they can. So there's not uh, any technical skills required. Um, the only thing is obviously you need to have a little bit of background about the specific stuff that you visualize on a map to basically just understand what you see on a screen and you can basically analyze it and, and speak about it. And could you explain the importance of collaboration required between various departments in a municipality and why it is important in the context of using technology? So for me, it's very important. Um, in a lot of municipalities, there's a, a let's call it a silo mentality. Um, and it, it doesn't happen on purpose um, and also not deliberately. I think it's because of a lack of, um, let's call it, um, understanding of what happens in one department, how does it filter through to another department? So a classic example is if you look at the information on a, on a platform, and again, I'm going to use the example of infrastructure projects. So infrastructure is not only um, for the, let's call it the, the, the engineers in the municipality. Um, you actually have a town planner involved. You've got a GIS department involved. You've got your CFO or the finance department involved because they look after the finances. Um, and then you also have your, your municipal manager or your city manager that always wants to know what is the progress of this particular project. The councillors are also very much um, involved in the process because they need to give feedback to the community. Now, if everybody can see the same thing on one system, on one platform, you're going to have a greater, um, how can I say, um, visibility of what's actually happening. And then it's not a question of the, the one department is doing a report and another department is doing a similar report, but then the staff do not speak to each other. So for me, it's all like one platform, everything comes together and everybody looks at the same picture at any given point in time. I think that is the important um, principle that we need to um, basically look at. 